the guy that I started with, you know, Essence was, you know, my turnout wifey. She was, you know, that's what's known in the game is a turnout wifey, that word. And when I heard, out, heard she died, it was three months later. And I had watched her interview. And then after her interview, it was three months later. It was a lot. It hit me hard. It's dangerous out there. Very. How long have you been doing it? 16. How old are you now? I'm 23. Do you enjoy it? Um, actually, I'm going to say I do love what I do because it's my line of work and it's a way of getting money. But this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. What do you want to do? I do want to have a business and I do want to go back to school. And if I can't conquer a business, I will, of course, not stupid, work this job, do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to go eventually get a job. Or if I can get in school where it can get me further, then that's what I would do. But this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. But this is what provides for my child, and this is what's getting me where I need to be. I don't have the most support from my mom. I don't have the most support from my dad. But the support that I do have from my mom, I do take it. Who's taking care of your kid? My mom, she helps me take care of my kid. When I'm working, my mom has my child. And then when I'm not working, I take my baby for at least a month. Probably the longest of the shortest is probably two weeks. But I'm not finna have my baby knowing what I do because that's not what I want her to think is okay. Eventually she'll find out. Hmm? Eventually. Yeah, eventually she find. And my baby's very smart. For a three-year-old, she's very smart. It scares me. She's very, she's very smart. And she talks to me in full sentences. And I'm just be like, Okay, wow. <laughs> She's something now, so. But yeah, my baby, she lets me know, like, you need to get your shit together. This is not no game. It's not, this not for play. I'm not a doll. What, no. what kind of role models did you have as a kid? Uh, I was in placement growing up, and I did have a few staff that I did look up to. I had two male staff that I looked up to. Their name is Javon and Big Ralph. And then I had two female staff. Their name is Mama Ora and Mama Rita. I looked up to them. And they taught me how to be a woman and how to take care of myself. They taught me how to take care of myself. Your parents weren't in the picture when you were younger? My mom was in my picture in and out. She started doing drugs and stuff like that and doing alcohol. She didn't tell me about the drugs part, but I found out. But my mom was on alcohol, doing alcohol. She was on drugs, doing PCP. And then I know that I was with my, I ended up going with my auntie, my auntie Shell. And when I lived with my auntie Shell, we lived in Carson for a minute. And then we ended up going to Temecula. And that's where I lived until I was, I want to say nine years old. And then there was this summer where my auntie was trying to put me back with my mom. My auntie, my mom had went to rehab and tried to get herself together. And my auntie did it illegally where the court didn't say, I can go back to my mom. So when my mom tried to enroll me in school and I started getting in trouble, acting out because of me not knowing of my emotions, they put me back in the system and they took me from my mom. How do you describe your childhood in the foster system? The foster system, it was, it was some staff that cared and it was some staff who just really didn't give a fuck. They had favoritism. It was just, the system is no place for no kid. And that's what I'm just gonna say, period. System is no place for no kid. And to the parents that do put their kids in the system now, that's no place. They need to take responsibility for their actions. At the end of the day, we reap what we sow. What we do is gonna happen to our kids. And it's just 10 times worse. And we just need to take responsibility and learn how to talk to them. Cause that's what I wanted my mom to do. My mom didn't talk to me. Instead, she let the system just take me all the way. But I just wanted my mom to talk to me. I'm just this helpful, helpless little girl that wanted her mommy. But she didn't get that. She don't have her daddy. Are you concerned about your daughter following in your footsteps a little bit? No, not at all. My baby's very smart. She want to do sports. She always tell me she want to dance. She want to do sports. And this is a three-year-old. Yeah, but you're very smart too. <laughs> Thank you. But this is a three-year-old telling me, Mommy, I like dancing. I want to go do sports all the time. I just got her a bike for Christmas. I got her a bike for her uh, uh, scooter for her birthday and some clothes and stuff. But for Christmas, she just wanted to get on that bike. She didn't want to do nothing else. I took her to the park and instead of her running around with all the other kids, she stood on the bike. She had, that baby fell four times and still got on the bike. I didn't put her back on. She said, no, I got it. But this is a three year old. You 
You work with a pimp? Uh, yes, I do. But I'm not going to tell you his name. How did you first get introduced to this? Um, I was 16 years old. I AWOL'd from my placement from Laverne, and I made it to Western and 107th to go meet with my friend. And this guy, he hit the corner, and he asked me what I was going, going to go do. And I lied. I told him, I'm finna go get some money. I'm finna figure it out. He said, well, I could, tell, I could help you. And I'm gullible. I'm a child. I'm trying to turn up. I AWOL from placement. So I look inside his car. He got a bottle of Remy Martin. Of course, I'm finna go with him as a child because I want to go turn up. I AWOL from placement. My mindset is on going to have fun. So a lot of girls out here, they be like, no, that's not what I wanted to do. No, 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 bitch. That's what you wanted to do. Stop playing. That's what the fuck you wanted to do, bitch. Stop playing. That's why a lot of niggas is in jail for no reason, because you bitches out here playing. But I looked at his car, I was like, yeah, let's go. He let me have a few shots, and he put me down on Figueroa on 65th and Fig. And that's where it started. And I was only 16 years old, but I never told him how old I was. I never told him the truth. But when I did tell him the truth, he told me I can't do that because you're a kid. And I respected that. He dropped me off on Crenshaw and Imperial over there in that little shop on Mark by the Mark, uh, what's that, the McDonald's and stuff over there. Where the, uh, what is it, Norm's over there now? He dropped me off over there and he told me, call your mom, tell her to come get you or call somebody, but I can't deal with you no more because I don't want to get in trouble. And I respected that. And I let him go about his piece and I went about mine. But my little young dumbass went right back to Fig. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Do you regret that move? Going back? Getting into prostitution. I don't regret getting back to prostitution because of what I dealt with. The reason why I got into prostitution is because the way I was provided for is not the way I wanted to. I feel like the way I, the reason why, well, the reason why I started prostituting is because when I used to go home to my mom, she didn't provide for me the way she provided for my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters are allowed to act up kick me out the house and still get whatever they wanted. Jordans, iPhones. I have a younger sister. She just turned 18 this year. She had a phone before me. You know what I'm saying? We're four, we're all four years apart. She had a, a, a fucking phone before me. Like, of course I'm gonna go out and figure out how to get my own shit if my mom's not gonna provide it for me. So that's what I want to go do. And she felt like because I was in placement, that I couldn't do it. But I, be, I was feeling that because they acted up too and they should be in placement. They shouldn't have it as well. So what I did, I AWOL'd and figured out how to get it every time. Everything I wanted because my mom refused to provide it for me. You're clearly intelligent enough to do something other than this kind of work. I know, that's why I'm not gonna be doing this for the rest of my life. Mark, I'm not this stupid. I talk shit all day about these hoes. Like y'all be dealing with these niggas that say, oh, on the day of homies. How, how is you a pimp? But you saying on the day of homies. A real pimp is a gentleman of leisure. Either you're going to pimp or you're going to gangbang. Either you're going to be a gentleman of leisure or you're going to be a gangbanger. But you you got to choose one. You can't be both. When got, girls is out there butt naked, you out there to protect her. You're not out there to make it harder for her to get money. That's that's not pimping. That's not home. And you're supposed to be, and she's supposed to be a representation of you. Well, if you're sitting on a day of homies and you just knocking bitches out for no reason, you can't chop her for knocking a bitch out for no reason because she sees what you do and that's what she's doing. You cannot get mad. The game has deteriorated a lot. Oh yeah, my folks, he's not, he don't, he don't play that shit. He's some real, some real game. Could never. The shit I see out here, I just be like, this is what these females like. That's what they like. Because I tell them all the time, this is what my folks do. This, he don't do that, 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 that. That right there, it's not allowed. And then bitches be like, oh, well, my folks, this, this, and that. And he allows that. Well, then you don't want to get nowhere. And I could tell because back in the day, they didn't allow that shit. They used to chop pimps down for doing dumb shit like that. Like, that's not a gentleman. You're not a gentleman hopping out on a bitch and running her down block from block if she ain't look at you and gave her no action. What do you think most of these women are out there with these tennis shoe pimps? If you want to say most, Mark, because you said most, I'm going to say most out of 75% for no reason. They're out there, the same reason why the trick's out there, because they tricking on these gangbangers. Oh, my folks this, my folks that. 
you give him every dollar and all you get is a few exotic spots. You get a few heels, a few pumps, a few. No, that's not what you out there for. Even if you got to go through a CPN to get you something to put your, a roof over your head, a car, do that. But I'm going to tell you this, baby girls. Half of these niggas that's saying on the dead homies, that's not no pimping. That's not your folks. <laughs> This is not your folks. Is it just because the girls are lonely and they want a, they want a guy in their life? Attention. They want the attention, male attention. That's attention. They, some girls, they know they're pretty. They know what they're capable of, so they take advantage. And that's not good all the time because they make it harder for the girls like me that's actually trying to get somewhere. Like, cause me, I'm a little shy, but sometimes I will get a little rowdy. But for most of the times I'm shy, I'm just trying to get my money and get out of the way. But I come across people that think, oh, how you gonna pull up in a bucket and say you can upgrade me? I'd rather be on foot. Bitches, used to, these females used to choose up with guys that look, that not that looked like they winning, but that was winning. And that's why they chose up, because he's gonna help me, he's gonna put me in a position to win. I don't want to be with nobody that's going to guide me down. I don't want to be down with you. I want to get up with you. I don't want to be down. I want to be stuck. I've been doing this since I was 16. I'm 23 now. I've seen a few of the same guys. I've been to school with a few of these guys. And I see them out here. And they doing worse than they was doing when they was in school. So it's just for that point, why would I even fix my, my brain? <laughs> It's, you know how it is, Mark. Tell me about your clients, your customers. Um, like what, like specifically as what they ask for? Or... Well, I mean, like, uh, what, what have you learned about men from, from doing this? Oh, I learned a lot. I learned that men will use you. I learned that men will abuse you. I learned a lot. Like my, some of my customers, I'll get in the car, I'll get a good vibe. See me, if you can't pick me up and take me back to where I got to go, it's, you're not my client. That's not the type of clientele I'm looking for. This is business. I help you help me. If, you, if I can't help you help me, then this is, this is not a deal. And I feel like a John should treat a female how he should treat his own people, regardless of any situation, because we are female and we are still human. Okay, yeah, we are hookers, we hoe. Okay, I get whatever y'all call it. But we are still human beings. We still have feelings. We still have emotions and when the person try to make us feel less than that's when we go up and i've seen a lot of girls come up missing because they didn't tripped or robbed a trick because of he didn't make her feel less than but it's like how could you expect from me for to provide you something and you don't want to give me what i want i didn't came across a few tricks that felt like oh you're going to give me what i want i didn't be almost had my cut my face cut off thank god thank god I didn't been sodomized. My ex-wifey, she had her, she had got her titties done. She got her one of her implants cut out on fig. So I, all I can say is, be careful when you hop in the car. With always be have a weapon, because regardless of a vibe, a trick will still turn. A trick will still turn. Like they, they'll turn. Have you been in love before? In love. In love? Uh, no, hell no. Nah. Only been in love with my baby. That's the only person I'm in love with is my baby. I'm scared to be in love with a man because I don't know how to love a man because I didn't have my dad there. So I don't know how to love a man, so I refuse. I'd rather just keep it business, cordial. You help me learn and I help you learn for right now until I get a little bit older, probably in my 30s, then I'll probably settle down and try to find a man, man. But once I'm about 25, 26, I'm going to settle down to get my business and my schooling going. Then I'm going to go into my 30s and I'm going to get into trying to find somebody to settle down with, possibly get married by I'm 35, have another kid and live my life on. But I don't want to just be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. I, I want to I want to get in love right now. No, because I know damn well when I leave right now, I'm going to go right back to work. <laughs> that's, that's a lie. What kind of hours are you working typically? I usually work when I hear traffic. 
There's traffic. I'm, I'm not giving out free game, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. Uh, yeah, I'm aware that you guys work your your asses off. I work my ass off. I just tell you that sometimes I feel like I work 24 hours because I only sleep for two hours and I pop back up just because I'm scared. Are drugs a part of your life? Uh, depends on what you mean. What type of drugs? Well, like crystal meth. Hell no. Nah. I don't do no hard drugs. Ecstasy, nothing like that. Hell no. Nah. I smoke weed and I take my cray cray pills and that's it. And I make and I make uh, I um I go to a doctor. I'm prescribed these pills. I'm not just taking these pills. It ain't nothing but fucking clonidine. You're one of the sharpest, most self aware working girls I've interviewed. I think. <laughs> it ain't nothing but clonidine. I, I know what's wrong with me. I got mood swings, a little bit of bipolar, anger issues. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But that's what the, the the weed do. I smoke the weed when I'm angry, and then the clonidine is when I'm just having mood swings in the weed, not working. I don't know what's wrong. So what are your mental? Mental health issues. I have anger issues and uh, bipolar depression. It takes a it, I just take over dumb stuff. Like I had this best friend that I lost, and I kind of feel bad because some bad happened to her when I left. She she was older than me. She's 35. And she was really, she had the mind of a, th a three-year-old, like literally. And she had seven kids and I just didn't understand. And the stuff that she would do, I'd tell her, hey, put the water inside the sink. She'd be like, oh, are you sure you want me to put the water inside the sink? Yes, I just said put the water inside the sink. I mean, put the water inside the sink. Are you sure? Because if the water go inside the sink, she'd try to argue me down about it. Like, I'm sure. I know what I'm telling you to do. You got to be that that little minded. And that reminds me of a child because a child would try to argue down about something like that. My daughter does that. And I get upset about little stuff like that because I'm an adult and I'm a young adult. So, I, and my mindset is a little bit more bigger than adults my age. So it, it does tick me off. You feel like you're on your own? You're all by yourself? I feel like protection wise, yeah. Do you have friends? I have, I could say I have one real friend. My, real, my one real friend is my best friend, my hairstylist, my everything. Her name is on Instagram, love me quiche. Go get your hair done in Las Vegas. I did this though, hair by me, but she taught me how to do it. So if you want to get your hair really slate, yeah, love me quiche on Instagram. L-U-V-M-E-K-I-S-H. So you're, you're based in Vegas or here? I'm based here and in Vegas. I'm cross country. You go back and forth? No, I'm cross country. You go all over? Yes. How are different cities different for the game? Okay, well, down south, there's more D-boys or tricks. There's really not no white men that are tricks. The white men that are tricks are the tourists that like go to Vegas and different places that the millionaires and stuff like that. They're just real discreet. But down south, most of your tricks, most of your Johns are going to be them, them D-boys right now. Right now, that's what's going. But you might come across a couple white men, Hispanics, that got the, you know, but them D-boys are out there giving up bank right now. D -boys Don't be are, scared. Or drug dealers. Yeah, drug dealers, exactly. You think the streets are where you're, you're meant to be? My favorite streets? No, you know, working the streets, dealing with these kind of guys, hustlers, con artists. Yeah, I don't deal with con artists. I, we, them con artists out here, I call them um, hoe hustlers. Yeah, I seen a lot of whole hustlers last night. That's a great term. All I can say is you do not hop out on no bitch and chase her three blocks down. That is not a way to represent yourself. You guys look horrible. And when you see them on the street, don't do it because you're definitely not going to get no action. It don't work that way. And I'm not popping it. I'm just letting y'all know y'all it's, it's not going to work. What's more important to you, love or money? Right now, money because I have a child to provide for. And I love, I already got the love because I have her. But 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 that was important because I didn't have, when I met my baby daddy, I was lost, I was young, I was so stupid. My baby daddy was a whole hustler. And you fell for it? I felt, oh, I felt dumb. Let me tell you so how dumb I was and I'm happy I, I, I can laugh at myself right now. This is how stupid I was. I knew my baby daddy, I chose my baby daddy, I knew him for three months and when I went to the to the hospital and found out I was pregnant. Guess how long? Guess how many months I was pregnant? Three months. So that means as soon as he put his little thing up in me, I got pregnant. 
Now, I had only been with him three months. I was three months. I mean, we the first week, Mark. Is he in the child's life? Um, before he got incarcerated, he was. He did a very good job. He's not a deadbeat. He did his job. Um, he did his job so well, he tried to kidnap my baby from me. Because he felt like, I, you're not finna fuck with no nigga, take care of my baby. But it's just like, you gotta understand, I'm not gonna just deal with anybody that's going, no, just ain't nobody gonna be around my baby. And he fought me for two years, not like physically fought me, but like over the phone, like, no, you ain't gonna have her back because I don't want her around this specific man. This specific man took care of my baby very well. I'm not, I don't say names, but he took care of my baby so well. And I just be like, damn, you ain't gotta be that stubborn. But I feel like he was trying to protect her, but it was, we was all good. I just feel like he shouldn't have been that stubborn on that, on that part. But my baby did get kidnapped for a little bit from my, from my baby daddy. And if you know what I mean by that, you will know if you have custody of your child and you do, you do have an agreement with your child's father or whoever you do let your child's go father or a go visit. You will know that if you made that agreement, okay, let's say I let my dad, my, my daughter's father go visit her dad for two weeks, two weeks, and that's it. Once two weeks and a week pass, that's kidnapped. And that's what I let my daughter's father go do. And he kept her longer and never returned her. I tried to go receive her back and it was a problem, but it was more of him trying to protect her. And that's why DCFS didn't get involved because I could understand that. I've been in placement, I've been in the system and I know so I refused to put DCFS in that because of that. I know he was just trying to protect her because he know how some men are. Some men are weird. Some men will be like, oh, if you leave, your baby can't leave. You got to pay for me for your baby to leave. But I've never been in that situation, thank God, but I've heard that type of stuff. For an outsider or a square who isn't really familiar with it, what do you think the most misunderstood thing is about girls that do this kind of work? Um, see me, I'm doing this right now because every time I try to get a job, it takes me at least six months to even get a response. I recently tried to get a job. I don't like telling people this, but three months ago, I stopped for a minute because my baby, and it was hurting me, and I feel like, let's see if I could try again and get somewhere with this bullshit at Square shit. Like, people keep telling me because I got in trouble, and I didn't want to keep pursuing if I'm going to get in trouble, and they were going to try to take my baby. I, got, I went to jail in Louisiana for some shit that I had no business. I didn't. I, I wasn't even in the car with the shit that I got caught up with, and they was trying to take my baby. And I tried to see if I could change it this way. And because of the other class I did, they did drop the case and it left me alone. But I did try to get a nine to five, and they they it gave me they gave me they didn't they didn't try to they didn't respond until six months later, and I was just like what? But they were trying to give me a good position. They were trying to give me a manager position manager's position for a solar company. And I get, I got paid. I was supposed, to, I get paid twenty six hundred a month plus commission. I would got paid thirty five hundred and better every month. But it took forever for the shelter to get my birth certificate. It took forever for the shelter to get my social. All that took six months just to come. I didn't have none of that information. I had my ID, but I didn't have my social and my birth certificate. It took six months for me to get my social and my birth certificate. So I just quit and I was like, you know what? I've been broke for too long. I'm sitting here selling food stamps to the man around the corner somewhere or down the street or wherever he was. I was selling food stamps just to make sure I can eat and have some, you know, have something, have clothes or whatever. Cause the shelter only provided so much. After a while I got tired, I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I know what I'm capable of doing. I know if I go out there and I go with somebody and I keep myself right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be straight. And ever since I've been with this man, I've been straight. I ain't had to ask for nothing. Right now I'm on auto. My folks don't babysit me. I know how to send the money. I know how to do what I gotta do. Cause I wanna get somewhere. It's some bitches that play. Cause they don't, they just playing like, what you wanna play for? It's like, yeah, we young, we wanna have fun, but it's a way to have fun. And it's a way to get somewhere and have fun. And me, I wanna get somewhere and have fun. You have a bank account? Actually, yes, I do. But I ain't gonna tell you what you wanna know. My bank numbers, no. Nope. No, no, no. I'm just wondering bank if you're numbers, nope. I'm just wondering if I'm getting, I'm getting at you. You don't put it in my hand, mister. I wanna know if you're saving money. 
Actually, no, I ain't been saving money currently because actually I had to spend $4,000 to get myself out of the promoted jail about like, I want to say right before Thanksgiving, right before Thanksgiving. I went to jail. I had a warrant in Permona. I had a warrant in San Bernardino and I had a warrant in Orange County and I had them warrants. I knew I had them warrants, but I didn't care about them because I really don't work out here like that because I know how these niggas be. So I let them warrant warrants ride, but I've been taking care of them. I went to the warrant case and promoted. They threw that shit out. The 21st in San Bernardino, they threw it out. I just got to go to Orange County January 4th. I'm pretty sure they're going to throw it out because I got a, a good lawyer. And at the end of the day, y'all didn't catch me catching jumping in no car. That wasn't me. How do you think working the streets has changed you? Always be aware of your surrounding, no matter who pull up on the block, even if it's, it is somebody, folks, still look just in case you want to hop out the car and try to rob you. Because I was always taught, because my Uncle Lawrence, he was pimp, and he always say it's okay to be aware of your surroundings, but it's not okay to look a pimp directly in his eyes and keep staring. You can look and be like, okay, that's a pimp, go. But don't just be like, oh, that's some pimping. Bitch, what's wrong with you? No. But it's okay to be aware of your surroundings, but bitch, don't just be looking a pimp in his fucking face. You ever look at your life and realize that you, you're doing something that's just so crazy and dangerous? Oh, every day. Sometimes I even don't want to go outside sometimes. And I cry before I go outside because I get these feelings like somebody going to take my life. And those nights that I do go out and I feel that way, I always get into a bad day. I have to either argue with the trick or he don't want to give me what I asked for or either just the night be bad and it's not because of my mindset it just be like i'm just trying to be more precautious because at the end of the day my folks don't go outside and get the money the way i do he gets his own money but he don't get it the way i do the way he get money all he got to do is just run they gonna take the product and that's even if they don't he don't run they just gonna take the product and he gonna be fine they don't weed is not illegal it's legal so it's like they can't really do too much you know so What was the question again? We'll move on. How does this uh, <laughs> lifestyle affect you emotionally? Lonely, because I don't like having sex like that anymore because I can get it any way I want to and enjoy it the way I want to if I need really need to, to be honest. I can find a good trick out there that want to give me some good dick and pay me what the fuck I want, to be honest. I got a good trick right now. He keep asking me, can I fuck you the way I want to and I give you what you want? But because I have respect for myself, no, that's not what I'm looking for. But it does make me feel lonely because I don't want to get into a relationship with a man. And he feel like he's more stronger than me where he can be a narcissist. I didn't been in some situations where, you know, these Johns feel like they have more control of you than the bed. And they don't. And they have to realize, yeah, you spent your money on me, but you still can't handle me the way you want to. Because at the end of the day, you got somebody to go home to, not me. This is the business. We're not in love. We're not a couple. Are most of your clients married, you think? Um, well, I'm going to say, uh, depending on where I'm at, I, depend, I want my clients to be married. I'm looking for something. But you could. If they're married, they're more in and out and done. Quick money. Yeah, quick money, and I don't have to worry about no problems because it's like if I report a problem, they wife they gonna have a problem with their wife. What's your biggest regret? Having a baby while doing this, and not having um, not having myself all the way together. Yeah, I have a place, a, a stable place to lay my head. I stay. Yeah, I have all that, but at the end of the day, I'm not there every day with my baby to teach her to walk, jump, hop, skip. I taught her, yeah, I taught her how to ride a bike. I, her dad taught her how to walk, you know what I'm saying? I, my mom taught her how to speak. I potty trained her, but I want to be there every every step. And I feel like sometimes, like, the day before Christmas, I almost thought I wasn't going to make it. And I sat there and I cried. I had to take the bus because my Uber wasn't working. My folks' Uber wasn't working. He was trying to send me an Uber away from where the fuck he was. 
nobody Ubers was working. They didn't want to go pick me up from the area I was in because of the gang violence. So you know what I did? I put on some regular clothes. I walked towards Hoover and guess what I did? Went all the way on the bus to my baby house. The bus didn't run the way I was going to come back, but I still made it to my baby. That's all that mattered. I made it to my baby to see her open her presence. And I always tell myself, and I'll tell anybody, before a working girl, I'm a mother, I'm a woman, you know? I'm a person, I'm a human, I have feelings. Chase, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? In this game? Or just in life? In life. In life, don't take shit for granted. Don't take anything for granted. And always be on your, be 10 steps ahead. Cause today my mom, I love her dearly but she'll always knock me upside the head and step on my toes regardless. But I still love her because I know if I need her to provide me a quick place to stay, she's going to be like, all right, you can stay here, but it's not where you're going to stay forever. Like just, you could, you could lay down, but you can't stay. All right, Chase. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wish you lots of luck in the future. All right. You seem to have a lot of potential. Thank you.